on the Daily Review, we talk about a Charles Bronson movie from 1975 called Break Heart Pass. With me, Joe LaRocca. Pretty hard not to say heartbreak pass. That's the first that's the first problem with this movie. Its title is Break Heart Pass. Not Heartbreak Pass, which just seems more like a word or a turn of phrase. On this page that I took notes on, I wrote something that I find more interesting, and I wonder why I wrote it, or what, so if somebody said it, or if I just wrote it as a thought, and it just is happens to be on the same notebook page that I took notes about this movie on. It says, having a story is more important than money, which is, a, which is cool. Uh, but probably I probably wrote that down because somebody said it, or like it's a Bob Dylan lyric or something. Anyway. Break Hard Pass. What's this? What this is about? It's eighteen seventies. I've been watching a lot of movies from like this time period in America, or just the eighteen hundreds in general. A lot of them have been in America, and a lot of them in the Northwest, which is interesting. I've never been there. So, uh, is a Tom Grise film? I believe that's how you say his name. He did like a Muhammad Ali movie. He did a bunch of stuff. Some some good stuff. I can't remember his most famous stuff. Anyway. Charles Bronson movie. It's uh, the 1870s residence of a garrison at Fort Humble Frontier Outpost of the U.S. Army uh, is suffering from diphtheria, which is like uh, actually kind of similar. It's like a cough, fever, and uh, like inability to breathe. So timely. Um, and there's a special train that is going up there with medical supplies. And they stop off to get, you know, tanked up. A whistle stop, I believe they call it, tanked up on water. And uh, a lawman has taken into custody Charles Bronson and brought him on board the train um, to bring him to the fort because he he, he has a $2,000 bounty, which it says here is approximately $4,700 today. So uh, that's kind of the setup. And we're like, okay. And, and oh, also on the train is the governor and the daughter of uh, the the captain or leader of the fort that they're going to. So there's like two two fancy pants people on there. The rest are soldiers, and then this uh, and like a commander, and then the the uh, marshal, and uh, and uh, Charles Bronson, whose name is Deacons um, or Deacon. Uh, it um, is actually a wonderful setup. And if this movie had been made a one year later, it would be better. Because this is the same summer as Jaws. And this movie, well, uh, I mean, it came out like uh, after the summer. So, but, but it had been made before, you know, it was in production before Jaws did the opening they did that made the industry realize, hey, we should always start our movie with like some crazy inciting incident. And we've talked about this before, that movies like pre, you know, you know, maybe 10 years earlier than this, it started. Um, but I think Jaws has, you know, brought it to extreme popularity. Not to say that there aren't movies that have awesome openings from earlier on, you know, I mean, ones I can think of off the top of my head are like, uh, oh, what's that one? With the bomb under the car. Oh, you're so stupid, Joe. The Orson Welles one. Touch of Evil. Jesus, that was close. I almost looked like a real fool. Um, anyway, so it does have like a really slow start. And uh, it's not interesting at all. The title screens, I think, they do this like lines effect on, on, on when they're doing the, the fonts and the titles. And it's horrible looking. It looks like a poorly interlaced video or something. It's terrible. And so that's already kind of annoying. And then it's just like scenery shot. Uh, uh. So it's it's a, it's a slow build and not, not in the good way. I don't mind a slow film, but just like literally you're just like, what am I even looking at here? Who cares? Um, but once it gets going, it's not bad. The story is good, but overall the movie is just like poorly, poorly 
everything. I don't know. The, the action's cool. I mean, it's maybe maybe it was supposed to be taken just as like an action movie, but the premise of like someone dies on the train and it's like a who done it on the train, you know, like murder on the Orient Express or something like that, which is a great any plate where everybody's stuck in a location and they have to figure out the murder is good. So I, I applaud it for being like a Western murder mystery, a Northwestern murder mystery, you know, which is really cool. You know, murder intrigue on a train with a Western setting. Uh, all that's awesome. But, like, uh, the problem is, is just the pacing, really, actually. The more I think about it, as I talk about it now out loud, it's like, well, no, that was pre- that was fine. That was fine. That was fine. The acting is not, like, great or anything, but uh, this type of movie doesn't necessarily have that. It has one of the best, like, drawn covers or, like, posters I've ever seen. It's Charles Bronson, like hanging off the edge of a train while a guy is stomping on his hands and there's like it's the behind him is like a cliff so he's he would fall like into a snowy valley and it's amazing and it's like hand drawn wait what does it say <laughs> death road the express to break heart pass that's that's the tagline that means nothing does that mean something so oh it's an Alistair McLean book which is like he wrote all sorts of like uh, what else did he write <laughs> i am so bad at doing research for this show especially when i am not paying attention uh yeah bronson got paid a shit lo- bronson's the, what the interesting thing is charles bronson uh you know him from like death wish great escape maybe those are the kind of his most popular movies but then he just like t- did tons and tons and tons of movies where it's like, he's such a weird actor. He's so weird. It's unlike most actors where they're like trying to do something. He's just like never trying to do anything. And it actually comes off as fairly realistic. It doesn't come off as diverse. He can't play a large range of emotions, but he's one of those actors who's just playing themselves. And usually that happens like with Tom Cruise and stuff. Like think he kind of can't get away from their persona. It always feels like they're playing them. I've had that with like Jennifer Lawrence a little bit in some of her later movies. You just can't see through all the uh like non-fictional elements of the person and but, so see he's kind of like that but in but those people are interesting you know when they be themselves they're interesting like when johnny depp kind of is himself a little bit in a role or or, or robert downey jr i'm thinking of like pop popular actors you know but like when bronson does it it's like he's playing himself and he's himself is not particularly interesting you know, he's just a guy from like Philly or wherever he's from. Who's just like they shut him. Like he's not trying to impress anybody, and not in the same way. Like, all right, so it's like what Clint Eastwood does, where he's just like, uh, you know, and just a, a like seems passive about. But there's like he's so charismatic. Like that's what's so awesome about Clint Eastwood. You know, and his performances that he can convey so much. This is just Bronson. Just like I'm here to do my. It's like he. It's like a a mechanic was like I, I'm gonna act and I'm not afraid of but the thing is if you went and took a mechanic and just were like you gotta act they'd be like all put off by the lights and like the actual I mean actors often get especially when you're casting short films you cast somebody and they do great in the interview and you talk to them and the audition and stuff and then like once the lights are set up once they realize oh we only have an hour and a half here and then we have to move on like you know it's fucking hard being on set is hard in general and it's just really hard on the actor so I understand it so there's something impressive about Bronson that he can be himself I think he's just like he just was a badass and he just does that you know I like I want to read the biography of Charles Bronson um so it's a pretty good setup because Bronson is like oh is he a murderer or is he a doctor is he good or bad is he the criminal or is he a law enforcement you got to kind of go back and forth a guy gets shot in the head really early in the movie and I think it's a young Sam Elliott but I couldn't find anything it looked like him and the timeline makes sense um yeah oh it has a really cool western theme song um let me see if we can find that uh, so let's see if we can find any facts. Ooh, Bronson was paid a million bucks for this movie on a six million dollar budget. Ouch. Um, that was that was a problem. Oh, oh, the Alistair McLean uh, things that I've seen is when uh oh, oh where eagles dare. So he's like a very masculine. Uh, alternative shots to clear the overcast sky are present in the final 
climactic scene. Bronzer later said that in the original story, it oh okay. But when he read the script, the reveal was made much earlier. Bronson demanded it to be changed to the way it was in the original story, and this was done. During the film, Bronson discovered the script had been changed again to reveal his character. Bronson was unhappy with this, but went along with it as uh, filming was underway, and he felt he could not leave the production. All right, that makes a lot of sense. The music's by Jerry Goldsmith, by the way, and it is quite good. Uh... And it's out of print, baby. So the only way you can hear it is by getting the Heartbreak Pass Blu-ray <laughs> that came out in, in 2014. Yeah, it didn't do well. They, uh, the, the LA Times said it was a fun and familiar picture. So I didn't reveal the thing, that, but there's like a thing about the character, whether you've basically, the, the question you're asking the whole movie, is this guy a good guy or a bad guy, is revealed at like, with like 30 or 40 minutes left in the movie. And I'm assuming, and so he said that it wouldn't until like the very end, which would have been much better. You know, it's like that stuff in the westerns that were the spaghetti westerns that were coming out at this time. Very much of that, the man with no name, his, you know, that that character, that Clint Eastwood character, is the whole time you're like, is he? He's playing both sides against one another in the, these movies, and like, is he ultimately gonna do the right thing? And that's what's cool is that like the whole time you're like, God, this guy's like morally pretty gray and that because he's like murdering people but then you're like he only murdered bad people <laughs> and then like ultimately he'll like save the woman or like do the sacrificial thing it's quite cool but i guess i guess i can see why <laughs> Bron so it's like interesting bronson knows so maybe i'm what i'm getting the vibe in here is that he's just like oh fuck this movie's fucked up i'm not gonna i'm not gonna put in much effort there is a fight on top of a train classic fight on top of a train scene that's actually pretty damn good and there's like five or ten shots where it's just so clearly another dude playing <laughs> playing Bronson. It's just like, they don't even try and hide it. It's like, oh, geez. Now, maybe that's because it's been restored and looks much better now than it did on the big screen, possibly. Possibly. You know, and, and it's easier to miss things like that, strangely, on the big screen, which doesn't seem to make sense, but it does. Like, the, one, the thing that's most like impacted me when I when I like when I noticed that the most was Grand Moff Tarkin in the in in solo no in uh, Rogue One when I saw in the theater um what's up Biondi Casey Tomb I don't know who you are but you're cool uh, and I'm sure she's or he or she Casey I always assume it's a woman but I don't know why uh Talking about Andrew Biondi, one of my wonderful students. Anyway, um, what was I talking about? God damn it, Casey. You mother... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but no, oh yeah, Rogue One. Um, when I saw that in Grand Moff Tarkin, who's a character who is a man who's passed away, and, uh, and they did a CG version, in the movie theater, I'm like, that's not too bad. Especially they do a reflection on glass, which is all they should have done. That looks fine. Or just get a new fucking character, or don't show him, or whatever. Uh, or just get a, another actor to play. It's not that big of a deal. Put some makeup on him. Um, but when it turns on the camera, you're like, oh, that doesn't look very good. Then when I watched it on Blu-ray, it was like, holy crap, that is bad. That is like a video game. Like, that takes you out of the movie so much. Like, in the theater, not so bad. I think it's part of the motion blur of being on a bigger screen that that kind of stuff blends in a bit more. But when you see it, on like your 5K monitor or in your 4K TV, like much smaller on a Blu-ray, it looks ridiculous, crazy, 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 crazy. Um, so that's the thing that can be kind of the problem with these Blu-rays or movies that get restored is that like the makeup can look strange because it was not, you know, they weren't planning on this happening necessarily. Casey's a boy. We found out. Sorry for pre-gendering you or whatever it's called anyway uh yeah i mean bronson movies are great and i just, i i basically what i was trying to say there is that like i don't get why i like him i think it's because it's unique just his l l lackadaisical performances that are still for some reason effective and not in the same way as like a lot of the famous lackadaisical performers you know, like Clint Eastwood and stuff. I don't know. He's got another thing going on. And there's always that thing in The Simpsons that I always think of 
where they're like uh, they're doing there's like some movie on tv it's like death wish five or whatever <laughs> and it's <laughs> it just goes i don't even remember what the context is but somebody comes into the sheriff's office and they're like uh where's the suspect and, and it's just charles Bronson goes i shot him <laughs> i shot him <laughs> i'm gonna look that up i wonder if i can do that if i can charles bronson on the simpsons i wonder if i can share that on the screen um as well uh, 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 like uh, as how i'd want to do it okay let's try this let's try this oh you know what's going to happen is that we're not going to get the audio which is annoying here if i just play this now where do i hear it okay what we're gonna do what we're gonna do all right i have a way of doing this this is stupid no i'm not gonna do it maybe i can just fast forward to the place where he says i shot him oh okay here we go i found it so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna mic the, the, the computer here we go where's otis he's not in his cell i shot him well that's what now i'm going down to emmett's fix it shop to fix Emmett. See? It worked perfectly. Now you can look up that video yourself. Just type in Charles Bronson on The Simpsons into YouTube. Okay. Um, <laughs> look at that technology. Just crushing it. If I had set up a screen beforehand, I could have done it. But I just want to play some music. I didn't want to fucking talk about this movie because it kind of sucks. I watched it on uh, something. I don't know. I think Amazon or something. I don't know. Oh, the microphone's facing the wrong way now. Okay, let's do some music. I'm going to shut the mic off.
I think that might have blown over some speaker things. Oh god, I'm so not ready to be online right now. My brain isn't working properly. Whoa, somebody liked my music. Somebody named Matthew Sample. Simple. Simple, like Temple. He can't stop dancing. Let's give him a little more. This one's pretty good. <laughs> I have to admit, <laughs> Matthew, you must be a genius. By request. sarcastic. That's right, baby. Outro. Outro. <laughs>